is here for the demo, so I'd like to introduce Sensei Dave Falcaro of the Dojo. Okay, guys. Um, what, uh, what we're here to do is to demonstrate some some of a very different martial art. We do a martial art called Sogo Bujutsu, which is not anything like karate or kung fu. It's it's not like judo or anything anything else that's out there. It's very very different. The goal. Uh, behind our art and why it's so different is that where other martial arts are maybe interested in self-defense or maybe interested in uh, fighting, uh, some martial arts are sport oriented. Ours was birthed in combat uh, during the feudal age of Japan. Uh, the goal behind our art is to use people as weapons to take apart other people with them. It's kind of a strange thing. So we train with 37, basically 37 different weapons. Uh, flexible weapons being like chains and ropes. And we also train with uh, sticks and staffs. And we also train with knives and projectile weapons, including firearms. But the plan behind all the different training that we do is to get us ready to use people as weapons. So what I thought we would do is, I thought you uh, when we do demonstrations, we never plan anything. It's always off the cuff because that's what combat is. Combat's off the cuff. So what you're about to see is, uh, is something that none of these guys <clears throat> have planned for. Plan for. Uh, Ed Motion. So this is uh, Eric Victor Sensei. He's been a student of mine for how many years now? Twelve years. He's a very talented martial artist. Eric's going to face the wall. <laughs> okay, so what we got to see there, okay, is what we got to see there was a demonstration of what Eric might do, what he did do, when someone were to grip him up and lock his arms behind his back. And you're up there. Okay. Okay. setups for breaks. Um, the plan is to disarm your attacker. So almost all martial arts agree on some basic concepts. One of those concepts are, if he's got a stick, you disarm him. If he's got a knife, you disarm him. If he's got a gun, you disarm him. Here's where it's weird. When he's got punches and kicks, you exchange blows. That's what most martial artists agree with. We agree with the first three statements. He's got a knife, a stick, a bat, a gun, you disarm him. If he's got fists, you disarm him. <laughs> if he's got legs, you disarm him. You disarm those legs. So the plan is to, is to break what's coming at you, and, and our strategy is about eliminating the possibility for attack. And we could always be nicer. We don't necessarily have to break those arms. But, see, that's, that's the interesting portion. If, you, if you're training to do severe damage, then you can be really kind and comforting because you're capable of doing so much, if that makes sense. So let's see some more. My student Tony's going to go up there. Now you're hanging out for a second.
Tony's been my student for a number of years. Chris, how long have you been my student? Okay, so Chris has been my student for three years. <laughs> so that's a serious attack for someone who's only been trained for three years. Elbow, rotator cuff, <laughs> spine. 
That's done very easily with any connection. What we learn later, if you control the spine, you control the man. We learn later is that when he grips, to use his energy to do the same. <clears throat> now that's not me grabbing him or touching him. That's me using what he gave me. That makes sense. <laughs> when we understand that, energy compounded is a good thing instead of a negative. In all the other martial arts, what you see is this person attacking and me going, get off of me. Get off of me. Hiya. And attacking, no offense to But that's what you see. Or you'll see things like the way out is you headbutt him. <laughs> you know, that's what you see. So what they essentially do is they destroy connection to reestablish connection. If that makes sense. What we want to do is say thank you for connection and make certain that that connection never happens. <laughs> The greater the connection, the greater the force here, the more I can utilize and draw upon that force. And they're very strong, these two guys. So what I can do with that strength is I can lift Chris off his foot. I can draw Brendan around the circle and take him off the stage. So, so the plan is that it's an understanding of what's internal, and what is external? What is internal, okay, is the distribution of force. If I plug something into an outlet, does power come out? That's happening. It also goes in. When we think about a person gripping or pushing, we're thinking about power going in. What we're not thinking about, be careful because you have what we're not thinking about is power going out. So when he pushes me off this thing, I utilize that push and I draw in that energy to push back. Does that make sense? So he's pushing himself. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So thank you, John. Appreciate it. So this is a big difference. Uh, throw a hard push. That is force coming into me. Now, look, look, look carefully and you'll watch as the force comes into me and I turn it and I give it back. That's done through many years of training. Um, and it's very easy to do. It's a heck of a lot easier to do that than it is to do this. <laughs> Taking the force is a lot more difficult. It's more difficult on my body and it's more difficult because of what it does. It off-balances me, it puts me in bad position. But if I receive the force, accept it, and give it back to him, what I'm doing, the reason why his chin goes down, is what? What's happening? Uh, it's making me just crush my spine and I'm falling back. So I can't The lock that I wanted to have, which is any lock, any lock, will control his spine so that I don't have to deal with all the other weapons. Unlike fighting, where it's skill matched against skill, Soto Jitsu is an art of war. I don't want to fight. I don't want to match skill. I want to dominate and make certain that you can't do anything to me. If I had to take him on with his skill set, he might hurt me. If I control his spine, then he has no ability to hurt me. Does that make sense? What we see is that any attack, every attack, becomes my attack. So if you were to strangle me, really speak. That strangulation becomes my technique. It becomes my way of dominating over his aggression. Does that make sense? So, I may not have the ability to take a person, lift them over my head, and toss them. I may not possess that ability. But if I can borrow everything that he's given me, add what I have to it, and then give it back to him, things get pretty easy. Okay. The plan is to do this 
from positions that are impossible. I'm waiting my feet with my entire body. He's taking my shoulders and locking my scapula so that he has a spine lock. Now he's got everything. And through his connection, I can attain everything, if that makes sense. So even through the most extreme measures, even the most extremely horrible situations, I can dominate him, not with the force that I possess, but the force that I can steal. That is why I continue to train in this martial art after decades. Because I've never seen any martial art come close to, the, to these concepts. Everything else is about the force that you generate. Everything else is about the ability that you possess. This martial art is extremely different. Why? Because it's about the gifts that are found all over the place in everyone else, not in what you can do. It's not about your skill. It's pretty neat. In the beginning, we start as every other martial arts, uh, every martial artist does. We deal with oncoming attacks, we deal with how to strike properly, how to kick properly, how to strike more powerfully. But then, we learn how to utilize those strikes, how to fit into them, how to understand them. So, if you were to throw a punch, the plan is to no longer, not only no longer fear that punch, but understand the strengths of that punch. <clears throat> Here, I entered the form of that attack to lock his spine so that I don't have to deal with more attacks. Uh, a punch from here is kind of silly. Let's see that? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> let, let's see the kicks from here. The kicks are really impressive. <laughs> what is he going to do here except call my mom bad names? <laughs> His spine is open to attack. What, what my pinky can do here is put a tremendous amount of pressure. So, what we find is everything that we learn in our basics, if you would agree with me here, and we learn to draw and have a lock, we then realize that the person's structure and his form <coughs> is what's truly powerful. And for me to try to defeat that form, that takes energy and that takes a lot, a lot of, a lot of ability, right? I have to lock him, I have to strike him, I have to do all kinds of things to get him down. But if I can utilize his structure and the strength in his form, then I really don't have to do anything. See? Do I have a lock? Sure I have a lock. But well, how is it applied with the pink? Uh, if you would throw a punch. How is it that I attain a spine lock from his punch? Does that make sense? <laughs> right? What we want to do, once again, is understand his strengths so that we can exploit them as weaknesses. What is it that he's giving me? Most of it I like. When he throws his, four, his fist at me, I like most of it. I like almost all of it. The part that I don't like is this part. I like that he wants to open up a channel of connection. I like that he decided to feed that connection. He's going to use his power, his energy, his focus, his form. If I knew how to accept those gifts, then I could really do something. Does that make sense? If you were to grip me around this. He's got me. Where are my locks now and where are my strikes? Here's my strike. Right? <laughs> and then I could kick him. Right? He's got me. And you know what his friend's going to do to me from here. Most of it I like. Most all of it. How do I use it? I'm moving through his connection. Establishing dominant position. Then, with his own strength, I throw him. 
you guys like to add anything? Cloudy at the time? Two more things up. One is about one is about the systems of the body. There's the lymphatic system and the synthetic system. The many systems, the systems of the body, and each are controlled by the mind. Have you ever experienced so much pain that you thought you were going to black out? This is not about experiencing a tremendous amount of pain. This is about overwhelming the body so that the body <coughs> believes that there's too much to cope with, there's too much going on, that it can't remain conscious. So, if we're here, and I sense some aggression, right? I, meant, I might sense it a lot of different ways, but this is a good way. <laughs> then all I have to do is, is just touch these, certain, these specific spots on the body. Okay? And then what happens is the body systems are overwhelmed, and there's not a lot that, can, that he can do about that. That's, that's just... Right? And to get him awake again, it kind of takes a little bit. It's like, uh, you know. <laughs> now it's the same thing as being uppercutted, right? Really hard. Or getting hit by a truck. It's just, a, it's just that this is a trick. It's a trick. It's a way to... It's a way to trick the body into believing that there's nothing it can do and it needs to turn off. There are other pretty, pretty miraculous things that we do. In ancient times, sometimes when you were on the battlefield, this is a little gross, guys, but the method of payment for a samurai was a stipend. That stipend would increase if he could produce proof that he was good at his craft. The way you produced proof, proof was you collected the heads of your enemy, you brought them home, and you displayed what you what you done with your day. Sometimes you would lose your swords and your knives in people that you were fighting. So you couldn't take their heads. And you're like, where's my sword? It's over in that guy. Can you hold on a second? And not too many enemies would be like, sure, right? I'll hold on. So they had to develop methods and ways to get a person's body structure to work with you instead of against you. Cognitively locking the body and make it, making it supported by its own weight. That's pretty painful. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> there, that's less painful. Okay. So now I can say, okay, you stay there. <laughs> And I can pull my sword out of the sky. You're not going anywhere. And then I can lock the sky. And I can collect that. So many different ways of doing that. And the purpose was always to understand the body's strengths and understand the body's weaknesses and to exploit those. Any questions about this? What you guys are seeing is extremely rare. Yes, there's a question. <laughs> well, you're cute. <laughs> any, any questions about anything? Where your, where's your school at? We have one in Northampton, and we have one in Bethlehem. Any other questions? We're the only ones to teach uh, so Jitsu in the United States. Um, a lot of people don't believe in the existence of the art, so I offered a textbook on it so that I could explain that it's real and that what we do is what we do. After 10 years, I just published this, uh, I guess, two years ago. If you guys are interested in asking questions on personal 
Basics, you may. Yes. What are the age groups? Um, age groups? I started <laughs> as young as five. Of course, they're not going to be learning this. Well, they actually are. What we do is we, we teach them these methods, but we don't tell them what we're teaching them. And then if they, if they have a good heart, by the time they, they grow up a little bit, like 12, 13, sometimes if we, if we see that they just have a good spirit about them, 10 years old, then we'll start to unlock those secrets. Like, hey, remember when we were playing that game? And this is what that game's really for, locking people's spines. <laughs> yes. Are you guys on Main Street? We are. We're on Main Street, North Tampa. We've been there for we've been there for 14 years. Nobody knows that we're there because there's there's like four or five martial arts schools in Main Street, but or in North Tampa, But we're the first. We're behind Jay Subs. You know where Jay's is? We're not the Christ school. Here. Godai Shin Dojo. We, we came up with an American name because people were wondering what, what religion we were. <laughs> so so uh, we came up with a, with a name, uh, Lehigh Valley Warrior Arts. Any other questions before we end? I always like the outrageous ones, guys, so, you know, ask away. You know, is the force real? And <laughs> you can apply this to, to people, can you apply it to dogs? <laughs> um, I like I like long questions. How many students do you have? Um, I have about seventy. Seventy students. Yeah, not, not all of them are active. You know, but uh, I, have, I have students that travel all the way from the upper ports and parts of uh, Canada. Uh, people come from all over the place. Students in Massachusetts. Uh, they travel to the Winnipeg Arc because. This is the only place you can get it is in North Tampa. I noticed you guys still have like belt systems. That's very new. I developed that because, because we I, I learned the Menkyo system, which is incredibly difficult for a American to learn. It's a system of scrolls that one inherits. I still I still give my students scrolls, they still inherit scrolls, but the belt system is so much better, it's modern, it's easy. The Menkyo system you are a white belt for seven and a half years, you don't think you're getting anywhere, and then you finally get your black belt, and you're like, I don't really deserve this. <laughs> so it's, it's just a really weird system that was meant to degrade people. I, I, don't, I don't know why, you know, but it was just meant to keep you humble, and to, and to humble you, man, did they humble me. You know, it, was just, it was really rough. I don't do that, I just build my students up. I, I'm not into that. <laughs> How long does it take to learn that uh, sleep technique? That could be useful. <laughs> <laughs> sleep technique? Uh, it takes a day. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> 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 it's really easy. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you teach all the classes? I, I do. I am on my students. Um, I have a personal connection with every single member, uh, member of our of our Rue, which is our martial arts family. Um, unlike other martial arts where you kind of, you know, you learn from this guy, you learn from that guy, we kind of take care of our own, so everybody gets personal attention, and we're really, I'm very involved with each, each one of those things. You guys need all of them. Sorry? You guys need all of them. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. How many days a week do you recommend somebody to learn? Uh, I, I recommend What's a typical program? I recommend at least once a week. I say once, once a week? No, at least once. Oh, once a week. If, if you come twice, that's, that's great. Uh, please come once. And then after that, you know, some students get obsessed and they come every day. Hey, that's fine. You know, other students come once every two weeks, and I'm like, I want to see more, you know, but whatever works. Any other questions? Come on, guys. We just saw some weird stuff. Do you have any, you have any like, medical training in case things go wrong? Uh, we actually have a tremendous amount of okay. medical training. It comes, it's called Sayo, and it's, it makes you, makes you better killer. <laughs> you have to learn, you have to learn, it's kind of gross, but you have to learn where all the arteries are, how the body works, how it functions, uh, anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, study of the body in motion, it's really important, and we, we do everything from set bones to put joints back together to fix headaches, uh, 
Uh, aligned spines. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shiatsu is, is this old form of uh, healing massage. We do uh, acupressure, we do flexology. It's a full study. It's pretty huge. Can we come just for that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we may end up learning a little more. <laughs> you bargained for. <laughs> Any other questions? I do. <laughs> I read, I, I read 87 books on ninjas. Uh, I kind of got obsessed with ninja a little bit. Um, one of one of my uh, a colleague of mine is, is the world's foremost ninjutsu historian. He's a big ninja historian. His name's uh, Anthony Cummins. You have to check out his books. They're amazing. We might be having. We're going to try to get a, a seminar. We're hearing one from England. He, he lives. He lives in England. He, he really was in Japan. He's always there. Um, any other questions? How long is the class? Um, our adult class, our, our, our pre-teen class and our teenager class is an hour and a half. Our adult class covers more material and we, we go pretty in depth as to the application of that material. So we say an hour, but we run them back to back because it's hard for adults to get out of the house during the week. So we say, We'll just run all our classes back to back and you can just take as many as you want. So, so sometimes people stay for two classes. That's often the case. So an hour, but really they stay for two hours most, most of the time. What is the, is it, is it a, a weekly, what, what do you charge to teach? Um, next to nothing. I, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my problem. I'm a horrible businessman. Um, it's the weakness here. Great martial artists with great people, but we are lousy businessmen. We uh, we don't do contracts, and we charge less than half of what other martial arts schools charge. We charge eighty-five dollars a month. Some people, it's actually worked backwards because I'll show you a list, and then they'll they'll hear the price and like, oh my gosh, you guys must suck. <laughs> <laughs> like no, we really don't. Uh, you know, uh, one person said, I can afford a lot more than that. I was like, good, oh, pay for it, pay for it twice. You know? But uh, the, the plan was to not discourage anyone for monetary reasons. So it's $85 a month, but you can come to as many classes as you want? As many locations, as many classes. We do free seminars. We, uh, yeah. Are there any girls? Yes, I have many girls. I, I actually love teaching girls. I don't like teaching women. <laughs>
these, these samurai who did train on people decided that they couldn't kill everybody, so they, they came up with this method of, wet, of wetting a mat and rolling it up and then cutting through that, and, and it works. And, it, and when you have that skill that you develop with a sword, you can translate that skill into everything else. So when we swing a sword, like I said, we swing people that way. That makes sense. Any other questions? There's, there's truly a plethora. Oh, yes. How many deaths do you have in your place? How many deaths? I myself have never killed anyone. I've broken a lot of bones, but never, never people who were nice to me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's all our 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 place is all about uh, peace, love, and truth, and, and caring about each other. Believe it or not, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really here. For two purposes, well, I would say three. Let's let's say every single technique for these three reasons. And let's say an expert. You learn how to break a person's neck. The first reason is to break the person's neck. <laughs> the second reason is to not break his neck. So you can do a lot of different things with that person. Because you know how their neck breaks, you'll never do it by accident. You know how to keep them alive. And the third reason, probably the most important, is if you know how the neck breaks, then you know how to keep your neck from being broken. So everything we train has that three, those three reasons. An arm break. So we can break the arm, so we don't have to, and we know that we'll never break the accident. I never want a student coming in and going, Sensei, oh, what? I broke it? <laughs> so you know exactly what you were doing, right? So one is to break it, two is not break it. And three, no one's ever going to break any of my students' arms. They know exactly how that arm breaks. And they're going to keep the person from doing that. Um, any, any other questions? Injuries during your classes often? or Believe it or not, I'm wearing some wood to knock on. <laughs> Fourteen years oh, I've been great. teaching in Northampton. Never any serious injury. And not even like minor injuries. Um, the, the, the injuries that we have are like two students get a little overzealous, and then like one student distracts him, he goes hot, and then he gets popped in the face. Something silly, you know? Like, uh, all right, I'm gonna throw a punch. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. And then somebody says, Hey, Chris, you know, huh? <laughs> 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 uh, we had we had stupid things happen, but, but yeah, that's hard. You know? <laughs> we've had silly things like that, but we've never had, and that's because of how we train. We train so that it doesn't happen to us. Any other questions? I'm taking up too much time. No, you're fantastic. Thank you. Um, do you break any logs with your hands? <laughs> uh, some, sometimes, sometimes to demonstrate. I'm, I'm not a big one on breaking. Sometimes to demonstrate. Some people, people are big in that in martial arts. So, you know, if you don't do it, then they're like, ah, he's no stone. So sometimes we'll do. Do breaking just to show people, but we really, we really don't do that too much. Only the tree attacks them. Yeah, I don't take that tree apart. <laughs> yeah. Any, any other questions? Well, thank you guys so much. It was a truly a pleasure. We're here if you want to discuss anything. I have brochures and cards. If you'd like to see uh, more, you can definitely check us out on YouTube. We've got a lot of interesting stuff on there. So, yeah.